first half commentaries on the way very soon here on BBC Radio Devon then and in the Championship Plymouth Argyle they're at home to Sunderland today and the referee though at that moment blows the final whistle it's ended all square there were not a huge amount of chances at either end but there was a huge amount of effort first half was high energy two teams with attitude nobody came here to lose it I'm sure but both sides came to win it but chances at a real premium I think it's two two styles that are very similar so the the youngest team on average in the league average age and they've got loads of energy so they play a similar system to us they commit loads of bodies forward and they like to attack so that's what we do and by all accounts that would should lead itself to an entertaining game so yeah we're looking forward to it they've got top quality players everywhere and um, they've done so well last year and um, to finish in the playoffs just missed out they've got an unbelievably experienced manager and this year they're going really well as well so it's going to be um, a tough game Exeter City in League One desperate for wins desperate for goals they've lumped Czech Diabati up front at Bolton into the box it goes with the throw in Dion Charles the target again it comes out to a teammate which is Connor Bradley who packs it low past Jamal Blackman nothing that the goalkeeper could do more rocky defending from Exeter City this time results in a Bolton goal it's Bolton Wanderers 1 Exeter City 0 Morley flicks it forward they're in behind again on the pullback should be a goal it is it's in the bottom corner it's Dion Charles they walked it into the net really and Exeter City cut wide open Bolton Wanderers 2 Exeter City 0 Bolton are an excellent team have been an excellent team for a number of years they've got a clear way of playing They've got a squad that's been together for quite a long time now, so we know how difficult the game's going to be, but we have to be ready for that challenge. And I believe that at our very best, the players we have, we can win at Bolton. But it's about going and doing that on the day, and that's where we need to stand up and show who we really are. And the National League South, Torquay at Dartford. Ball falls out towards Rory Keating on his right-hand side, takes on the volley and in! What a strike by Keating! Reed turns away from his defender, takes a shot on low and into the bottom corner! A fantastic goal from Jamie Reed. He kind of felt that chance was lost and he drills it into the bottom corner. No chance at all for the keeper. Torquay will be top of the National League South tonight. Dartford nil, Torquay two. Dartford, big team. They do go long. They're very direct. They've got two six foot three or so players up front. The best way to handle it is to keep the ball yourself for longer and then compete when the ball goes up to them. They're in that middle pack that's tight and one win takes you up a few places and one defeat drops you a few places. OK, first half commentaries then. Talk here away against Dartford. This one live on BBC Sounds and the BBC Sport website. Your commentary team at Prince's Park. Martin Gritton and Harry Salvin. Thank you ever so much, James. Last time Torquay made a trip to Dartford, they went to the top of the National League South and never looked back. Oh, how things are very different at the minute for the girls. They're in the pack which they didn't really want to be in. On a side where if you get a win, you can push yourselves into the playoffs. If you lose, you're outside the top ten, which is how tight things are in the National League South if you exclude Yeovil at the top of the table. But the girls have been in good form lately. They did beat Yeovil in the FA Trophy and victories as well over Bath and have turned the tide a little bit for Gary Johnson's side. They'll look to go on, get another three points here at Dartford. And we remember that Dale Woking very well during the last National League South season. Yeah. He's a familiar foe in the other dugout in Alan Dowson and he hasn't really changed his sort of style. Big players, likes to play at all. Yep, no, uh, good afternoon, Harry, as well. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big battle physically for them today. Interestingly, they just, I'm not sure who just won that toss. I'm assuming Torquay, because they've just changed ends. Dartford are now going to be staring into that blinding sun, but then again, second half, it might have come round, so it's quite low, isn't it? You would, you would hope that the sun will have gone down by the second half of Torquay, but I'm sure it'll have an impact. But Dartford will get the game underway in their black and white half shirts, black shorts and white socks, whilst United in the changed light blue shirts with the white trimming with dark blue sleeves, dark blue shorts and light blue socks. And the two changes made from the victory over Yeovil in the FA Trophy last time out. See Asa Hall come back into midfield for Ryan Hansen and Ross Marshall starting over Sean Donnellan, both of them dropping out of the squad. Holston was initially 
first choice goalkeeper, but feeling a little bit unwell. So Reese Lovett comes in goal for the goal. So he starts in goal. Dylan Crowe, Ross Marshall, Ollie Tomlinson, Dean Moxie will be in a back four. Dylan De Silva, Asa Hall, Brett McGovern, and Cam Dolan. The four midfielders with Brad Ash and Phil Williams on top. Mark Holstead is on the bench. Amongst Lewis Collins, Archie Harris, Jack Stubbs, and Ethan Archer for Gary Johnson's side. Is he played in the midfield area, played long. Musa Diara will get there in front of Dylan Silva to play it back to Sanford in the dart for goal in the old luminous orange as the man alone play FC Wimbledon. Head of one in the air by Dartford and switched out towards the left hand side to the captain Coulson. He's got Oduardu on the overlap. Coulson will take it low from distance. That's an easy claim for Luis Lovetti in the United goal. Dartford making changes themselves. Winter, Miller, Rodney, Chin, Banbury, uh, Bradbury and Alexander coming in for Alton Top, Woods, Rooney, Wall and Manor. Paul Rooney, the former Torquay United man, suspended after picking up a red card against Worthing. So they line up with Ryan Sanford in goal. Maxwell Stafen, Musa Diara, Josh Nebard and Sam Aduwadu in a back four. Tiller, Tyrell, Miller Rodney, Jordan Winter, Richard Chin and Luke Coulson up top with Harvey Bradbury, George Alexander up top. They've got Barris Alton top, Luke Allen, Alex Wall, Archie Woods and Brandon Barze on the bench. Duan Dawson side as an offside against the Torquay United man. It will be a free kick for Dartford just outside the centre circle for the hosts. Gary was saying um, Diara is some size, isn't he? You just think the threat he's going to be if they're going to be putting in good delivery. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out for Torquay. Going to have to close eye on him. Ball from Sanford. Ball down initially by Tomlinson. Came back towards Diara by the Duffman man. Out towards Coulson. Eduardo on the overlap. For one simple we'll play back to Diara. Sends it over the top looking for Bradbury. Tomlinson the back of him now with Oduwadu, tries to play it off the Dartford man. But Gavin came in, it goes off him last, and Dartford will have the opening corner of the afternoon. Oh, here we are. I mean, Diara's ambling up, but you'd think that they're going to hit one of those big bodies, but they also have Nemhard. It's a fair size, Maxwell Statham. So. Winter coming in there as well. In the oh, swinger, crazy. the man got his head to it first. Lovett was looking to punch it, but it goes up for a goal kick, thankfully, for United. What a ball in from Coulson, though, eh? Mm. That's the real dangerous delivery in swinger. <laughs> Referee Emily Heaslip, Rudin Preker, and Elliot Spencer, the two assistants this afternoon. Very chilly evening. Afternoon in Kent. So we are getting to that time of the season where when it's sunny it's warm, but once the sun goes in it does get bitterly cold. Yeah, and it's really low in the sky, isn't it? So it kind of can be quite blinding. I know the sun's always bright, but you know, it's, it's kind of frustratingly so at this time of the year just when it comes around you can see the guys on the far side of the, the ground now how they're all got their hands up to their eyes to, to shoot it what do do to take the throw for Dartford in the middle playing the one two it's a poor touch from Jordan Winter that will be a throw for United going to be taken by Ross Marshall and his return to the side their injury picked up the other week. Ball dropped down to Coulson. Scoops it through. Ball done by Tomlinson to be turned away by Marshall. Come back by Dartford. Asa Hall standing tall as Josh Nebar tried to play forward. It's another throw for Dartford. Eduardo finding Alexander. He brought that down with his arm. He used to get away from McGavin. And the referee has given the free kick just on the edge of the area. Moxie holding. George Alexander, but I think they may have got away with one there because I'm pretty sure Alexander put, yeah. pulled that down with his arm. I think I think he'll let, let it play a little bit there, but the referee's given it as another problem for Torquay. Don't get away cheap free kicks on the edge of the box, particularly ones that they can capitalise on with their height. Hampton Rich and Barrow leading 1-0 away at Chippenham is the first goal in the National League South this afternoon. Colson send this one in. It's going to be a one-man wall of Dylan De Silva as Aaron Dowell shouting for Cal Dolan to mark his man in the area. 
in it will come from Colson. It's deep header from Nebard. Over, Winters, over Lovitz Bar, should I say. And out for a goal kick for United. Had a chance to get going yet, have they? No, Torquay get the ball down. It doesn't seem that sort of pitch and that sort of game. It's more a case of just helping it on, squeeze, try and create something, use the pace to get it behind, maybe capitalise on a mistake. Okay, this is time from the left hand side of the area from Lovett. Had a one in the air by Winter. Moxie wins the second, sends it long and high. Easy header for Diara to bring it down, chase it down. Will Bradbury played forward by Dartford looking for Alexander and a one by Tomlinson falls to Coulson got uh, Chin on the overlap Odawadu turns away from Marshall gets a cross in towards the middle flicked on and into the hands of Reese Lovett it was the header from George Alexander there, just stood his ground, kept an eye on that. Luckily, it wasn't a very powerful header to deal with. Good play down there, Torquay. Don't cry to the pressure, and the official, official on the far side will give the free kick in United's favour. And it, it looks like, obviously, We've seen Dean Moxie play for Exeter, Crystal Palace, Bolton, playing at left back over the years. It seems he's playing a left centre half role. Dylan Crowe's moved towards left back, and Ross Marshall's fielding in at right back today. I'm just trying to look at the shape a little bit. It is, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Moxie's experience means that he can kind of adapt quite easily, I would imagine. Don't have to be physical to play in centre half either. They just have to make sure his legs last the 90. Bradbury gets the cross in low, turned away by Tomlinson. Dolan sends it forward. Brought down by Diara, it was leading away from Brad Ash. Coulson. Appeals against Ross Marshall, but possession's back in Coulson. Trying to get away from De Silva, plays back towards Josh Nebard. A slow lead 1 0 over Braintree Town. Going down the right hand side, do Dartford. Gets a cross in, looking for Bradbury, turned away by Tomlinson, brought down by Williams, and Asa Hall can send this one long. Diara cushions it into the half of Statham. On the, by Dolan, he appeals that was a dangerous challenge in from Dolan, but he won the ball from all the intent they were calling for. Crow switches play out towards Dylan De Silva. Brings it down, uh, scoops on. it over, Oduwadu, Diara looks to come across and will play it in towards Coulson. Was asking for the foul from the silver, but the referee play waves play on as it's Lombard Duwadu. Tomlinson. Well, I think he was his intention was to clear the ball away, but managed to bring it down. Love it, clears it away. Flicked on by Hall. Diara pokes it out towards Coulson. Trying to get away from Hall, goes down, and the referee gives a free kick and it's a ball saying that was a cheap one to concede. Free kick just inside the United half of Duff. Well we're not seeing Torquay strikers actually try and get down the channels, there's no point in standing in the middle against the Ari, it's just going to eat that up. At the same time, just those balls that are getting fed to them are just going high and right, playing right to them. Sometimes you get that with a player of that size, it's like they become magnetic and all the balls draw towards them. Another free kick from Coulson, goes in deep, looking for Nebhard, goes over the head of the centre-half and that will go out for a goal kick for Torquay United. Shatter's instructions trying to get his front place to be more involved in the game. Yeah, that's it. exactly. You need the right balls, but yeah. I don't see much of them so far. Ball forward, flicked on by Hall. Brought down by Eduardo. Referee indicates there's the offside against Brad Ash, which. Exhaust. I've spoken about this before. He's not got involved with the play. Yeah. But he's given offside anyway. <laughs> Could play the advantage. Well, I, I, I think, I mean, in that instance, the ref's, the linesman's job to flag it, isn't it? It's the ref, whether she gives it or not, and she decided to give it. But, yeah, Ash is not going to affect the play playing from there, that's for sure. Well, I'm not sure that's not a foul. Here's Miller Rodney. 
back to Alexander, tries to play in in the middle. Marshall retains possession. It was brought down by Musa Diara. Cuts in on Ash. Too easy. Surging forward, plays the ball, trying to find Coulson down the left flank, but it'll go out for a throw for Torquay. So I'm just listening to Gary educating, um, educating Brad Ash on what he should be doing. He's absolutely spot on. He's not reading the game at all at the minute. He needs to get involved. Marshall to take the throw. He's got no short options because he's going to launch this forward. Flicked on by Hall. Ash through the legs of Diara. Nebard under a little bit of pressure from Williams. And the assistant on this side was going to flag the foul. The referee waves play on as it's launched forward by Sanford. Flicked on by Bradbury. Out towards the right hand side, scooped forward by Statham. One back though by Moxie will launch it forward towards Fear Williams. Turns in towards the middle. The Silver's calling for out on the right hand side. The tuck challenge in from Diara. Gavin wins back possession. Dolan skips in the middle, switches out towards the right hand side, looking for Dylan De Silva. Brings it down, just about keeps it in as well. A few step overs trying to get away from Odewald. He's got Marshall on the overlap. Tries to scuff in the cross, but straight into the hands of Sanford. That's better, isn't that? Better play. Spread it out. Stretch him a little bit, get to, get to De Silva. It's the first touch of the ball he's had, so, you know, get some end product on it. All important, but yeah, at least he beat his man and got the ball in the box. Better. Well, four by Sanford, recently joining the loan from AFC Wimbledon. Out for a throw for United from the drop ball. So you want McGavin, you, you want McGavin and Ace Hall getting on the ball, don't you, really? I mean, at the minute... These sort of games, you're just helping it on for the first 20 minutes, but if they can settle down and get them to play, great header from Hall. Well flicked on by Hall to Silva. As Nebard, pressure on from Brad Ash on the centre-half, who's really forced out of field of play. Brad Ash putting some great pressure on him as Nebard plays it in towards the middle. Falls to Moxie. He's got Crow as an option out on the left-hand side. He's Touching. joined by Chin. Back in the middle to McGavin, who's been pressured on by the Dartford players. Back to Lovett, who will launch it forward. Knocked down by the Dartford man in towards Moxie. Big switch. Switches out towards the right, towards De Silva. Brings it down, going to take on Oduwadu. He's got Marshall on the overlap. He's got Dolan in the middle. Use him. Looks up, sends it in, looking for Brad Ash. One by Maxwell, Stefan. And Oof. the header from Chin goes backwards, and Stefan will have to clear it away. Crow, sort of with the back heel sort of touch, couldn't bring it down and... It will go out for a throw for Dartford on the far side. This little gust of ice cold air coming through the <laughs> stand there, honey. Just happened to be on the side without any sunshine, so it is slightly um, chilly. It means we're not having to hold our hands up to, our, to shield our eyes the whole half. Yeah, that's it. One way or the other, I don't know what I'd rather have. Blinded or freezing. <laughs> forward for Dartford in that corner trying to skip away from his man as number 27 Richard Chin joined yesterday on loan from Charlton Athletic and the free kick given to United a foul on Brad Ash well, he tried to take it quickly but they weren't allowed to we well, seem to Silver out here he's just, just he's hugging the touchline and the, the full back's just not that keen of that Eduardo who's not keen on coming out with him is he so I would keep giving De Silva the ball until until that defender gets tighter because that's so much space had a one by Nebard Crow will shield it so the United have a throw Throws it forward to Hall. Tiara putting the pressure on him. All scooped over the top by the Dartford man. It's played in towards the path of Alexander. Launches up for Bradbury. Brings it down in front of Tomlinson. Switches out towards the left hand side for Coulson. Looking to put onto his favourite right foot. Pokes it in towards the middle. A shot low and wide by Tyrell Miller Rodney. We'll go for a goal kick for Torquay. We see the danger 
Bradbury. That's the first time we've really seen him play as a number nine, get the ball, you know, obviously he's number 23, but you know, that classic number nine role, he's got hold of the ball and he's distributed, got him up the pitch, got it out to Coulson. Coulson's obviously the danger, being their skipper, quality on the ball, set piece taker. So Tokyo just kind of have to watch that, but Bradbury's certainly got nothing to fear from these centre halves and the men in Tokyo haven't imposed anything on him yet. Kick from Reese of it. Of course, we'll keep you up to date with these scores with Exeter and Argyle as well. Apparently, goalless between Bolton and Exeter. Just Argyle have the home game against Sunderland, which is also currently goalless. So our first goal in any of the games involving our three professional sides in Devon on BBC Radio Devon Sport. Talkie, the Dartford on BBC Sounds currently goalless. Ball thrown in towards Colson on the edge of the area. Cuts down, trying to get away from Tomlinson. Can he drive the ball across? He can't because Tomlinson's got to the way. It's up for another corner for Dartford. Good defender for to uh, Tomlinson, but Colson again showing he's a danger. Got another corner to defend here. Got the feeling that Dartford are feeling a bit confident about this. Bit of a Colson corner. DR. It's interesting to see Bradbury right in the goalkeeper's face as well. And he's, well, Bradish just thrown, thrown Bradbury away purely because Ash is saying that he stood on his foot. Yeah. Because you, you'll know the feeling more than I do about having boots stood on, stood on your feet once oh, it's freezing it cold. Is, uh, it is something else. It's like someone hammering a nail through your toe. But you've always got the opportunity to give it back, Harry, <laughs> so that's the beauty of that one. Bradbury's already seen himself dismissed this season. In comes Coulson with the corner, Great ball. bouncing around in the area. This ball was taking a shot, it's blocked by Lovett, but the referee is giving a free kick in the penalty area for United. That's good, that's good for United. I mean, it looked like a bit of a melee in there, isn't it? I think um, being able to get a free kick and knowing the referee's on your side, is they're going to get a few of them today. Torquay. Playing the long ball when you look at Fear William standing next to Musa Diara. Well, I, 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 I would just play, I, I would play it to the other guy. I can have a defender taking him in and, and uh, down. Look it from Reese Lovett. Flicked on by Brad Ash. Nebard will hook the ball over the top. Brought down by Callum Dolan. Here's Hall. Ooh, that was a dangerous challenge there from Miller Odney. Referee not interested. Hall staying down as Dolan sends the ball over the top. Brought down by Joash Nebard. It will be Maxwell Stafford to clear it away. Ball still down. Ball flicked on by Bradbury. It's formed behind Alexander. Back to Bradbury again. Looking for Coulson as support. On the left-hand side. Cutting onto his right foot. He's got Odwadu on the overlap. Still with Coulson. Out towards Chin. Hall's just got back up to his feet. In comes across from Stafford. Cleared away by Dean Moxie. It's brought down by Joash Nebard. Feeds it through to Bradbury, out towards the right-hand side with Stafford. Gets the cross in, but it's right. taken a deflection of the Torquay United man. I think Gary Johnson will be seething at that challenge from Miller Rodney on Taysa Hall. It's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because they've gone in for to, to, to snap the tackle, and, and he's got the ball, so but he's he's left a bit on Acer and um, he's, he's limping. Hopefully, you hope it's just contact there and just bruising, and maybe he's just taking a kick, and you can run them off. It'll be sore for the rest of the game, but you can get through it. Just a bit more concerning if it's if it's caught him on the ankle. Coulson send the outswing corner this time. Neil, Silver. Into the mixer it goes. McGavin gets his head onto that one. Flicked on by the Dartford man, and McGavin will just send it out towards the left-hand side. And Williams looking like Good he chance. may get there first. He can't. And it's sent back by Miller Rodney to Ryan Sanford. Send it back. Forward. Brought down by Musa Diara, but the referee is given a free kick against Dartford. Just on the edge of the area, you have to have a free kick. Yeah, you get the feeling this is the this is the only way Dartford are going to play, isn't it? It's the way they play, they stick to that plan A is plan A, it's not really anything else, it's not. Torquay, you hope, have got a few tricks up their sleeves, they can work out this, and ride out this period, and the quality will show. It's Cam Dolan. In the middle to Williams. 
Steps up back oh, towards Cam Dolan in towards the area on the left hand side. Looks to set across the shot and Sanford gets there and Ash tried to poke it in. But it's got off to Yara last and United have their first corner of the afternoon. Well, that's much better play, isn't it? Really nice link up play down the left hand side. Timing of that inside pass to perfection. And then Ash, you think if Ash is just on his toes there, he might have had a, might have had a, 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 a tap in. He just needs to get the other side of the defender, but credit to him, he got there and forced the corner. He can Dolan to swing it in. If you can see, because it's the only little bit of the cool, curly bit of that side of the ground now, which has got a bit of sunlight on it. Everyone around the six yard area. Initial come from Dolan, flicked on by Hall, it's bouncing go. around. Ash couldn't get his foot onto that one. Darfur can clear it away. Full stays Hall on the volley, headed away by Nebart, brought down by the Silver in the edge there. He drives it low and drives it wide. So, and out for a goal kick for Darfur. How did that not go in? Brilliant corner, right under the, under the neck of it. And, under that crossbar and it's just just not going in for Torquay. Asa Hall doing brilliant to volley that ball as it was coming down. It was one of those classic ones you expect him to snatch at and, and balloon over, but he's a great striker of the ball and watched that one all the way onto his foot. Better from Torquay. Yeovil 1-0 up away at Welling. St Albans 1-0 up at home to Maston United at Clowns Park. All set forward by Sanford. Brought down by Tomlinson. Oh, well. McGavin, Hall. Surging the ball over the top, De Silva will beat Diarra on his foot race, but is there enough pitch on this? No, it isn't. Diarra managed just to make the challenge in to send it out for a throw for United. First bit of... They're setting up for a long one, no. First time we've really seen United in the ascendancy. Oh, that's a foul. Dolan goes down, one back by De Silva, sends a cross in low, but it's easily turned away by Diarra. Head up by Get Alexander. Well Gavin sneaks in in front of Bradbury. Boxing plays it back to Reese Lovett, who will launch it forward for United. Brought down by Stafford is McGavin. Hall. He's got Ash on the overlap. Sends it over the top beautifully towards Williams. Takes it over the top of Sanford and over the bar. What a chance that was for United. He sort of snatched it a little bit there, Williams. But over the bar it goes, and United, you say, have had the best opportunity in the half. a chance. Brilliant little lifted one over, wasn't it? Was that Asa Holder just lifted it over to the channel? Timed his run to perfection, but he had, he had the, the goal at his mercy. The ball was bouncing quite right, maybe just to lift it over the keeper, but he could have done anything with that. The keeper was in no man's land. Got to take those chances. Tomlinson, looking to get away from the Dartford man. He's got a good chunk of his shirt. Moxie Brilliant. finds Marshall. They're finding these little gaps here at United. Yes. Williams trying to get away from Diara. The challenge there from Winter. And it will go out for a Dartford throw and the frustration grows for United. A little bit of the decisions being made. They feel it's their throw. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if any other language is picked up on our effects, Mike, from the swear, we do apologise for that. Marshall, who's had a good chunk of the shirt there of Harvey Bradbury. Bradbury's just made a nuisance of himself, isn't he? I think that's... So he can't get drawn into that. Torquay playing really well. When it's on the deck, he's completely stranded, but when he's up against them, it just becomes a bit of a wrestling match, and you don't want to get involved in that. Morgan Whittaker's put our goal 1-0 up against Sunderland at home park. Oh, that's a foul throw. By Edouard, who's clearly stepped over the line. Exactly. Ball brought down, the shot from Taylor Miller. Rodney is blocked off the talking man. They're appealing for a penalty of the Dartford players, and it will go out for a corner. Yeah, hook him. That's right. Fine. Now the yellow card. You can't jump into the ref like that. It's ridiculous. So yellow card for Tyler Miller, Rodney. You may have been lucky not to be sent off earlier. We need to keep an eye on them throw-ins as well. The lad's foot was well over the line, wasn't it? And they've launched it in. It's absolutely well off for Torquay. Well, the end result from the referees is, is a corner for Dartford. Again, Coulson will send this one in. The ref's got to get hold of this, so the players grabbing each other in there. And it comes from Coulson. Cleared away by, looks like Brad Ash got a touch to it. Chin will keep it in play for Dartford. Looking to get away from Callum Dolan. Goes off the Fleetwood low knee last. It'll be a throw for Dartford. It'll be the long 
throw. Paul Allen down to the side, taking out on that far side. And here it comes, looking for Diara, flicked on by the man from Barnett, and it goes over the over the bar and up for a goal kick for United. 25 minutes gone here at Prince's Park, Dartford nil, Torquay nil. Both teams should have scored. In the last 10 minutes, five minutes even, we've seen both sides with very good chances. Just hit the target, 1-0 up. Ball long from Moxie. Nebard, well, he's had a bit of the rest of the match with Theo Williams and nothing referee there. saying nothing there. It was just a, clearly a case of the two going for the ball. Williams going down get in the up, end. Fred, ball up, momentum, then a push. Ball forward by Sanford. Put down by Tomlinson, cleared away by Marshall. Oh, for a avoid giving those. I mean, he's headed it out of play from the centre of the pitch. The problem with that is you get inviting another long throw on here. Look, like they're just getting them up from the back. Try and keep that ball in play. It's going to be what do I do with another long throw? A dart for youth product. Again, Diara's in there. Nebard's there. Bradbury's also in the party. And it comes Nebard, the target this time, brought down by Moxie. Dolan, ooh, in came the challenge from Josh Nebard. It will be a free kick for Torquay in the penalty area. And the referee's going to have a talking to to Nebard. And into the pocket she goes. That's and good. It'll be a second yellow card of the afternoon for Dartford. Good referee. I think that was a reckless one. Go for yellow. But she's getting hold of it, the, the referee, which is good, because, I mean, they are... They're not overly physical, but what they are doing is just... They're trying to bully Torquay a little bit here. Just need the officiating to be strong. Chippen nil, Hampton Richmond Borough 2. Mason have turned it around at Clarence Park. They lead 2 1 over St Albans City, and Welling have equalised against Yeovil. Averley leading away at the Bob Lucas at Weymouth as De Silva looks to keep this ball in. Comes to what do I do? And it's a throw for United. Emergency in game, this throw and taken. United assessing their options. Silver, Dolan takes an over course, tries to skip away from oh, well his man. Gets past Modewadu as well. Dolan plays it back in towards Fury Williams. Out to the Jerry. It's Crow with the drive. And it's turned away by Josh Nebhardt. Brought down by Bradbury. Under the pressure from his opposite number, Tomlinson. He manages to block the ball over the top. And it will go all the way in towards the hands of Ryan Sanford, who will launch the ball forward for Dartford. Over the halfway line it goes, header one by Marshall, brought down by Miller Rodney. McGavin oh, well, turns well, on two players and switches up towards Marshall. Here's Asa Hall, back to Tomlinson, who can field it through towards Williams. His touch is heavy, but he's managed to, well, I thought he was going to get away from his man, but he doesn't, it's picked up by Winter. Play it back to Diara, now with Adewale, who can find Sanford in the goal as far for it, leading 1-0 over Bath. Header one by Moxie. Brought down by Nebard. Flicked over the top by Chin, but it will be a front for United out on the far side. Oh, not there. McGavin. Well recovered. He's done well in midfield, going away as Dolan. He's been caught this time That's by Maxwell Stephan. I don't think yep. is this, I think this is just a talking to it. Dolan's been brilliant in there, they're just never shy of getting the ball in the half turn, even though he's got men tight with him and even though they're leaving one on him. You've got to keep doing it. Marshall and De Silva, the options on the right flank. And Moxie will switch the play over to him. Faked on by Marshall, brought down oh. by De Silva. Brilliantly oh. done. Oh, what? what are you talking about? Offside on to De Silva, which. I thought just giving it a handball of the ball going to play there, but then I can see why it's been given as an offside to the Sri Lankan international. Sent long by Sanford. Had a one by Tomlinson. Ash. Into well, the middle, looking for Dolan, but it's one back by Dartford. Only for Williams to pick a possession. Now with De Silva, couldn't keep the play. Oh, oh, well, nice. well, well, the linesman's eventually given the throw on. The whole ball went, did it? Depends on the angles you have. Into that one, yeah. Oh, 
throw back towards Sanford. Come on, Brad. Well done. Brad Ash putting the pressure on, but Tell Sanford managed to clear it away. Moxie. Ball appeals, and it's more of a ball to hand as Crow looking to turn away, and he's caught out. And Richard Cheen can send the ball in towards Millie, can find Bradbury, plays it back into the boss of Alexander, who drives his shot low and wide. Four on one in Dartford's favour there, and they couldn't finish it off. Well, I mean, more, more damning was turning into trouble on the far side, wasn't it? I'm not sure who that was. Torquay on the left hand side, was it Williams? No. Didn't quite see from here, but. I think it was turning just back into trouble after good work from Moxie. Long from Reese Lovett. And a one by Winter. Brought down by Coulson. Over the top. Tomlinson wins his header. Brought down by Winter. Now with Bradbury. Switches out towards Coulson on the left. Got Oduwadu on the overlap if he wants him. Cuts back in towards the middle. Now finds Oduwadu. That's a cross in towards the middle, flicked away by Moxie, brought down by Chin on the edge of the area. Trying to turn on towards his left foot, which he does, and into the top corner! On debut, Richard Chin, twist and turns, and he finds the top corner and Darford lead. It was a great finish from Chin, wasn't it? He's threatened a few times this first half to cause some problems with no end product, but that was something else. Faked on his right foot, chopped it back inside, opened up on his left, whipped it into the top corner. Turkey are going to have to think on opportunities they've had and the way that they're using the ball. Be a bit more productive, but I get the feeling that Dartford can hold on get a 1-0 and then look to hold on using their physicality, so that's something Torquay are going to have to move that ball quickly and keep it. It's where, I would say, Torquay would be missing Aaron Jarvis immensely here. Oh, a, a huge, you can see it literally, that's that. That's the problem here, they've got that strength down the middle and the threat, goal threat, someone that's, because there's, there's opportunities here, there's, we've already seen a few this half and they're going to give you a chance, but they'll be there to take it. Man United will get the game back underway. Marshall sends it forward, brought down by Williams. It's a heavy touch and Coulson picks up possession for Dartford. He'll easily get away from Mesa Hall, cuts in on Brett McGavin, as well as Dolan and Williams as well. And the ball goes out towards the right hand side. In comes across, it's deep looking for Bradbury. Reese Lovett gets off his line. Excellent. And the free kick has been given to United. You can see what's happening there in a yellow cup yes. for It's a tangle of legs, but he's a 10, Bradbury. He's just been a bit menacing. Just looking to cause problems, and great to see the ref can get on top of it again. You see those go unpunished sometimes. But... Reese Lovett choosing to roll the ball from a free kick. With his hands, being told to put it back. Gary Johnson was saying to me before the game, he wants his team to start quickly. Oh, as if they oh, I don't quite understand. Darford accusing Bruce Lovett of time wasting and something. One of them. Well done by Nebard. Coulson can launch it over the top, looking for Alexander on the left hand side. Cuts onto his right foot, gets the cross in, turned away by McGavin. Brought down by Winter. Now with Oduwadu. Finds Coulson. Oh, back by Callum Dolan. It's now with Oduwadu. The pressure from De Silva. And that'll go for a goal kick off Oduwadu. He knows. Last. The knows. Good decision. Kevin to Waterloo. Down to ten men away at Tombridge Angels. Not too far around the hour 25 from here. Thomas. Marshall. One back by Coulson. Marshall the challenge. Goes out for a throw for Dartford. Just that the work from Coulson has just not been dealt with either by United. No, Coulson's he's great in the ball, but he's their go to. You can see that the game plan is pretty simple. They just get the ball to him, get up the pitch, get a set piece, cause problems. And it's um, it's effective. Long throw in from Oduwadu. Flicked on at the near post, but claimed by Reese Lovett as Bolton lead against Exeter City by a goal to nil. 
Pressure on Caldwell and handball on the former Exeter man Moxie. Oh, it's the first time Torquay tried to play it out and do it with a bit of purpose, and, and unluckily the ball jumped up and hit Moxie's hand. But they're, they're going to persist at playing out the back from the, from the back Torquay, and I just don't quite know if the conditions lend themselves to that. But if the alternative is playing it down the throats of uh, Dartford into DR, then perhaps they've got to try and persist. Fumble one, bath one. Oh, just, and they can really slow the game down here, Dartford, because all these set uh, pieces. I mean, this whole every throw is going to take 20, 30 seconds. Be sent in by Sam Odewadu. And it comes, it's quite flat, cleared away by McGavin. Dolan flicking over towards Williams. Back towards Dolan, who can look to launch it in towards oh. the middle. It's one back there by Miller Rodney. Brad Ash will want the ball, but he's now one back by United. But Dolan skips away from his man, breaking down left and side. He's got Williams, he's got a silver in the middle if he wants it. Tries to send him the cross, it's blocked by Odewadu. And United have themselves a throw with 10 minutes until the break and start with one talking nil. That sun well and truly going down, isn't it? Last little bit of it. Lights come on. Timing. <laughs> Smaller on Dylan Crow now. He's got the throw. Finds Williams back towards Crow. He's intervened by Chin, and it's another throw for United. This is where you'd normally probably see Dean Moxie with a long throw. I was going to say, there's no point throwing it in, down into them. Just got to try and get it, take it quickly, move the ball quickly. Dolan, one back by Winter. You can look in towards the middle. He's got plenty of white and black shirts, and one of them is George Alexander. It's hit over the top to him. Coulson will join in support. Here is Alexander, cuts in towards his right foot, in towards Miller Rodney, Dolan gets in front, Miller Rodney still scrambling away, McGavin puts in his foot and wins the ball back for Torquay United. They're just looking for some sort of movement forward, there is none because it's gone to Dylan De Silva who's, I would say, further forward by a few metres, ball sent long, Ash wins it off Diara. One back by Nebard. Hall knocks in towards the path of Dolan. Switches out towards the right hand side, looking for De Silva. Brings it down. One back there by Oduwadu. He'll clear it away and out for a throw for Torquay United. It just seems a little bit off between the United players going forward. Yeah, and they're moving it well, they're moving it slick, and then they just choose to hit one in the air like that. And it just slows it right down. But Oduwadu's playing brilliantly. He seems to be all over the pitch at the minute. Breaking up play and putting in tackles and affecting it at the other end too. Short to De Silva. Another pressure from Coulson. It goes of Winter. Another throw for United. It's Marshall to take. Campo Williams. A little pressure on the back of them from Winter. Now with De Silva. It comes in from Coulson. The referee is giving a throw on to Dartford. Interesting. I think he's just pushed off against his leg. Isn't it De Silva? You can see him wanting to be an outlet more from Williams and Ash down the middle. Did that throw actually go in? I don't know. Well, they'll be taking it. It's not the first time I did Wild, he's had a foul throw today. Western Supermare 1 0 up at the gravel. Brought down by Alexander, can keep it in play, he has done. Scoops it in towards the middle, as now with Winter. Well, it's Thomas trying to get away. Alexander grabbed a hold of his leg. Thomas needs to get to that back stick, two men over. His chin, looking for the overlap. Plays it in towards the feet of Miller Rodney. Back heels it in towards the path of Statham. Tries to turn away, he makes Dolan. Tries to play it through, cleared away by Tomlinson. The best touch from Winter. Oh, on his toes. Now in Nebard. Out to the right, Shin looks to send in the cross, brought down by Bradbury, falls in towards the path of Alexander, tries to get the shot away, blocked off Tomlinson, Moxie will try and chase it down to keep it away from being a corner. That's cool. Now with Chin, low cross in towards the middle, great turn from Alexander, gets shot away and into the back of the net! And yet another Davy to the scored! It's George Alexander doubling Dalvin's lead! Torquay United can only look at themselves in sorrow. That's a brilliant touch and finish from him, isn't it? You can see Dartford growing in confidence. They're starting to play the ball into feet a little bit more. They're trying to 
trying to play football and, and cause problems and told to just stand it off them a little bit. But his first touch there, George Alexander, he's taken it on the back foot as if kind of almost like that kind of Cruyff turn and just played it round the defender and then pushed himself away from the goal, whipped it right foot back across the goal and into the side net. And it's a tremendous finish. And he has caused a few problems, but they haven't really been playing that way, Dartford. And now they're starting to play a little bit more. We're seeing more of Chin, more of Alexander. Torquay really has some thinking to do at half time. George Alexander, who he scored a hat trick on debut for Slough last season, rejoined Slough at the beginning of this season, had an electric start as well. A player who I'm slightly surprised Bromley haven't kept in his ranks. We've had some great success with young players in recent years, the likes of Kellen Fisher, who's now at Norwich City. Dartford have already won the ball back from kickoff, and it's now where Bradbury gets away from Tomlinson. Out towards Coulson on the left hand side. Onto the right foot, gets the cross in deep, turned away by Moxie. It's now with Crow. Ash. Yeah, I've thought the tempo here, Torquay, they're so far off it now, and Dartford smelling blood. Williams. Now with Chin, plays it back towards Bradbury. Trying to get there, does Crow, and it's now with Moxie. Now towards the left-hand side, towards Callum Dunn, who's been a little bit of a bright spark in this United side. Plays it in towards the middle, Ash, oh, that's a poor touch from him, it's easily cleared away. And Difficult on by Alexander, but you can clearly see Brad Ash is a man lacking in confidence, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is, but a tough, I mean, that's ball in. Oh, that's Paul from Lovett, and it's picked up by Chin on the halfway line. Looks to get away from McGavin. Looks up as Chin looking for an option. He's got it in Statham, who'll send it forward. Brought down by Bradbury. Looks to get away from Crow. The ball's still in play, and the referee has eventually given the foul against Harvey Bradbury by Dylan Crow. There's an opportunity out on the right-hand side. So Crow's now been booked. I presume that was for impeding what they tried to take a quick well, free kick. Well, he just blocked, he blocked it, but Bradbury, I mean, you've got to see it coming from Bradbury. He's just been a wind-up match in all game, and, he's, and it's working. You know, he's such a cheap booking. Torquay being playing really naively here. Consider you're 2 0 down, shut up shop, get the ball the other end, play with a higher tempo, just put a stop to it, you know. But they're not, they're just inviting Dartford onto them here. We've got another dangerous set piece. In it comes from Coulson, bouncing around, McGavin will clear it away as far as Miller Rodney, who manages to launch that ball into the car park behind the goal. And for a goal kick for Reese Lovett. a big team talking at half-time, isn't it? It is. I mean, I mean but the, the thing is that Tokyo haven't really started, have they? The quarter, we haven't seen any quality from them. So you can just think if they get confident and start playing a little bit, they're going to have a spell in this game. And when it comes, you think, oh, hang on a minute, we can play here, and they'll go on and score a couple. But better, they better start playing with that confidence now. And you see, and this is it again, Bradbury, just, again, just backing in, drawing them into fouls. Really naive stuff from Torquay. They've got... They've got to wise up a little bit here, because the time is ticking. How different would it be, though, if Fiora Williams had scored the opportunity in the, in oh, exactly. the first 20 minutes or so? That's it. Yep. <laughs> Another free kick for Dartford. Coulson did again to take it as their set-piece taker. Sends it in towards the middle, in towards Diara, who turns in the third. This is just easy for Dartford now. Dartford free talking hill. Well, it was coming, wasn't it? Even though it's cheap set pieces. As you said, playing nine football, talking, not getting anywhere. For Diara to be able to sweep in a volley on his left foot in the, just outside the six yard box is pretty scandalous. Someone's got to take control. Diasa Hall now out there trying to talk to players, but heads are down. No one's really interested. No one's talking to each other. It needs to be a hell of a second half from Torquay if they're going to get any self-respect back from this game. But you have to hand it to Dart with the three quality finishes. A very simple game plan and Torquay are scratching their heads. They're going to have a talking to at half time, that's for sure. He had 
Fergie's blow dry treatment. But that, that, you wonder though, I mean, that, that's Fergie's give players a roasting that he knows can do better. You don't want these players going even further inside themselves, but they're not playing with any, they're not playing with any thought at the minute, Harry. They're not playing, they're certainly not playing anywhere near their capacity, but you, you, I think just giving too much respect to the opponents and not meeting them and matching them, certainly in the battle and, and with the same energy and desire. If you can match them with that, then quality will build on top, but if you're not matching them, you're asking for trouble. Two minutes to be added on, Bolton 2 x to nil, Plymouth 2 to Sunderland nil. Head down from McGavin, here's Ash, little shove in the back from him, brought up by Chin. McGavin, Winter, managing to get away from McGavin somehow. Sends the ball out towards the left side, looking for Bradbury. That's a good foul decision. Foul to Tomlinson and a free kick. Yeah, well done referee, saw the... Come Dancy, what have you done all week? Johnson, what have we done all week since Yeovil? Absolute nothing, have we? Absolutely useless again. Moxie. Crow. What are we doing all Dolan. week? Switches the play, looking forward to Silver, brought down by Duwadu. Now with Williams, looking back out towards the Silver on the right-hand side. Trying to get away from his man, does the Silver. Gets the cross in low. Can it fall to one? It falls to Williams. Oh, he's put it over the bar from six yards. Oh, if that doesn't describe United this afternoon, I don't know what does. Well, I'm not sure what to say about that, Harry. The ball's squirmed its way back out. He's done the best he can there, hasn't he? I think Brad Ash squeeze it through, bit of footwork, and you've got a feel for Williams because the ball's come back to him and he's just leaning back and he's just skied it over the bar for five yards. Literally, 90, 99 times out of 100, you're not, you're not missing that. Just tap it into the empty net. But uh, when you talk to, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about confidence, Harry, but that's that epit epitomises Torquay this half. Coulson. Back to Wadawadu. In it goes. Nearly went back in for a fourth. It'll be a goal kick for Reese Lovett in the United goal, and you think this goal kick's been taken. That'll, That'll be it. it for the yep. first half. And for United fans, I think. I don't know what they'll be thinking at the minute, but I don't think they'll be well, having many happy thoughts. No, I think we just heard one over our shoulder, didn't we? Remonstrating with Gary. It's a lot of frustration. I don't I'm sure, I don't know how much of this is his fault. All players have not performed. And there goes the half-time whistle at Princess Park. Darford three, talking United nil and United, well, it could have been oh so different if Fia Williams, after a beautiful long ball over the top by Ace of all, failed to Fia Williams. He lofted it over Ryan Samford, who was rushing off his line, but the ball didn't fall in time, and he remained goalless until Richard Chin, on debut, on the edge of the area, curling the ball into the top corner to give Dartford the lead. They then managed to double their lead via Novite Vitton, George Alexander, a player who, if you follow National Football, you know he's a very dangerous striker, and managed to turn in the area on the United man to fire pass, Luis Lovett, and then they made it 3-0, when Musa Diara volleyed home a Luke Coulson free kick in a game where Kerry Johnson has said, you don't give away cheap fouls, you don't give away set pieces, United have done that, they've conceded the goal, and <laughs> well, to say the least, I think Tokyo United will have better first half of football this season. They've not started, have they? They've not started, but they're playing up against a team that we knew it, they knew what they were up against. We had Gary talking about it before the game. They must have prepared for this. But what they've done is stand off, respect the opponents, expect something to happen. You, you need someone to drive it. You need someone to be the catalyst. You can't rely on the experienced players. Young players get a great chance here. Don't tell me there's not space out there to play. We don't see them play with any confidence or any purpose, any drive. And they've paid the price, the ultimate price. Three brilliant finishes from Dartford. But let's, I'm not three goals better than Torquay, but they want it more. And, you know, they go in to Zeverly 3-0 up, perhaps, after uh, after what can only be described as a, a very poor Torquay performance. And you would also say that, tactically, Dartford have got the spot on at the minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they stick to the game plan. I don't think... There's no surprises here. It's not like they prepared for Torquay and going, this is how we're going to play. This is how we play week in, week out. Mm. But if you practice it enough and do it enough, you, you get good at it. So um, credit to them. But let's focus on Torquay. I mean, they really need to change. I would put those players back at the pitch. I wouldn't make any changes. I'd take 10 minutes, go out there and give it your best, because anything can be better than that. 
well, we'll see. Better first halves of football this season. United have been poor. They've not even got themselves going yet so far in this game. In Princess Park at the break, it's Dartford so, 3, Talking United. Caroline Densley. Weekdays are all about great stories. There's a big zoo dating site for animals called Zims. That's quite right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're, we're, you have to go through the stud book. Uh, as uh, rare and endangered as this, he, he, he can't be just meeting up with anyone. I just love finding out what makes people tick. Well, you don't need to wash them in clean water. I rinse mine in my um, leftover washing up water. It means that it's probably going to be easier to recycle. So, if you fancy a good chat join me the sound of daytimes with caroline densley weekdays from 10 on bbc radio devon bbc radio devon sports with james vickery Right, we're at half-time. Let's get some detail on all of our half-time scores then. Let's start at home part. Plymouth Argyle at home against Sunderland. Half-time report from Alan Seabrook. Yeah, Argyle to Sunderland now. Good scoreline at the break then for Argyle, who had to soak up a little bit of pressure early on in this game. Michael Cooper tipping one over the crossbar and a header wide by Vrusin. Uh, it's marked the early intent from the uh, Black Cats, but... Halfway through that first half, the uh, emphasis changed from Argyle. A little tactical switch up. They pushed up as as into the middle, onto the defenders, and Argyle started to click in the final third. And it fell to Morgan Whitaker to open the scoring. He picked the ball up on the right edge of the penalty air, cut in field, and we all know what he can do from there. It was another absolute worldie from Whitaker that found the bottom left-hand corner. And from there, Argyle were back in the game and on top. The second goal coming five minutes before not the half-time break, uh, 40 minutes on the clock, that pressure paying off. I got Sunderland forced to kick the ball long. Argyle won it through Gibson. It was played for Azaz, who had initially done the pressing work. This time he had the ball at his feet, around 12 yards out on the left -hand side of the penalty area and curled it past the goalkeeper. Good first half then, tactically. Good first half, scoreline. Just have to be careful in that second half. Sunderland do look like they've got some quality up front, but uh, at the moment, it's Argyle 2, Sunderland 0. Thank you very much, Alan Seabrook. Alan Seabrook at home. Part Plymouth Argyle leading Sunderland then at the break. Let's go to League One, where, afraid to say it's a familiar story for Exeter City at Bolton, Anthony Waring. Yeah, 2 0 down at the break. Exeter City here in the northwest of England. City started reasonably well, opting to play Czech Diabate up front this afternoon not really done much in front of goal the best they can muster was a, a Jack Etchison shot midway through that first half which was blocked on its way to goal other than that they've not really threatened although in terms of general play they were in it up until about the 34th minute when Bolton got in down the right hand side a cross came in from Dion Charles and Jack Iredale unmarked on the back post headed home for Bolton for the second goal City contrived to give the corner away in horrible fashion between Sweeney and Sinisalo and from the resulting set Piece. City defenders were sleeping inside the box and Adebayejo walked the ball home into an empty net. A familiar story, I'm afraid, for Exeter City trailing at the break. Bolton Wanderers 2, Exeter City 0. Thank you very much, Anthony Waring. Let's go to National League South. Talk United on their travels today. They're away against Dartford. Half-time report from Harry Salvage. Dartford three, Talking United nil, and I think it's safe to say we'll see better first halves from Talking United this season because I don't think it could get any worse from United. Gary Johnson wanted to make them start quickly. They started slowly as anything in this game. They allowed Dartford to have set plays because they've got big players. They've got Harvey Bradbury, they've got Joash Nebar, they've got Musa Diara, big players who will win those headers in the area. And I'll come back to one of those later because that's how they got one of their goals. But it could have been oh so different for United. Asa Hall lobbed the ball over the defence. They beat in the offside trap to Phil Williams. Sanford came running up, rushing off his goal. Williams lofted the ball but put a bit too much on it and it went over the bar. If that went in, we could have been seeing a completely different story. But Dartford kept on putting the pressure to be fair to them, they finally deserve this lead. One of their debutants, Richard Chin, on the edge of the area, twisting and turning, managed to get a shot away and into the top corner of Reese Lovett's goal. They then managed to make it 2 0 with another debutant, the very dangerous striker, George Alexander, who's done it at Slough Town for the last, se last season or two. Again, turned away from his man, goal at his mercy, bangs it in 2 0. United just kept their heads went down. They didn't look like they wanted anyone to put their hands up, going, This is my fault. We need to be 
more of a team together. It doesn't look like anything like that. And then later on, Luke Coulson, whose set paces have been dangerous all day, he managed to send a beautiful free kick floating to the area from the centre half. Musa Diara to volley home to make it dark for free. Torquay United nil. And it's safe to say, United have a massive mountain to climb if they're going to get anything from this game. Thank you very much, Harry. Harry Salvage for us uh, following the progress of Torquay United this afternoon. Our featured game non-league locally in the South West Peninsula League Premier East. Sidmouth, they're at home against Ivy Bridge today at the Manstone Recreation Ground. It's Peter Smith. Half time at Manston Lane, it's Sidmouth Town 2, Ivy Bridge Town 0 and Sidmouth have rattled the league leaders here. Two up inside the first 15 minutes and deservedly so. First on six minutes, the left foot free kick, a great strike from the D by Liam Carey put them ahead and then a slip in Ivy's defence let Nathan Cooper run through and score beating the keeper with ease. Lewis Jagger Kane's been a constant threat down there right flank and could have had a third but he had his shot well saved by Ivy's keeper who's shaky under high balls. The leaders missed a great chance to pull one back when Chris Wright skied over from a six yard from the Grice's cross and when they have attacked their passing and crossing has been off. A fussy referee's been busy with his cards, upsetting both sides, and the leader's Ivy Bridge 14 match unbeaten run is under real threat here. Half time again, Sidmouth Town 2, Ivy Bridge Town 0. Cheers, Peter. Let's go to the rugby next. The Plymouth Brickfields, Plymouth Albion, they're at home against Birmingham Mosley today in National League 2 West. Half time report on this one, Paddy Marsh. The half time score at the Brickfields in this National 1 game is Plymouth Albion 7, Birmingham Mosley 18. A disappointing first 40 minutes from Albion. They were totally outplayed by their visitors from the Midlands. The visitors went into an early lead when their fly half, Maxwell Whiteley, kicked a penalty before the visitors' first try came when centre Elliot Creed went over in the corner. Maxwell Whiteley then added a second try for the visitors, which put them 13-0 ahead. Albion gradually worked their way back into the game and good handling move from the backs enabled Robin Wedlake, the right winger, to outpace the defence for a try, which fly half Connor Eastgate converted. Back came Mosley. A clever cross kick was taken by Plymouth fullback Craig Duncan and Mosley winger Akil Smith bounced on the loose ball for their side's third try. So there's plenty of work for Albion to do in the second half. The half-time score at the Brickfields, Plymouth Albion 7, Birmingham Mosley 18. Cheers, Paddy. That's the latest then from the Brickfields in the rugby this afternoon. Let's have a look at the latest football scores from around the country in the Premier League. Full-time, Manchester City 1, Liverpool 1. Half-time scores for you now. Burnley nil, West Ham United nil. Luton against Crystal Palace is goalless at Kenilworth Road. Newcastle United 1, Chelsea 1. Brighton, they lead Nottingham Forest at the City Ground, two goals to one. And it's Sheffield United nil, AFC Bournemouth 2. Championship, Birmingham City 1, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Bristol City 2, Middlesbrough 0. Huddersfield Town 0, Southampton 1. Millwall 0, Coventry 1. Norwich 1-0 up against Queen's Park Rangers. Argyle 2 to the good against Sunderland at the break. Stoke City 0, Blackburn Rovers 1. And Swansea City 2, Hull City 0. League 1, Bolton Wanderers 2, Exeter City 0, Cheltenham 1, Oxford 0, Fleetwood 0, Stevenage 1, Leighton Orient 1, Wigan 1, Lincoln City 1, Barnsley 0, Peterborough 2, Burton 0, Portsmouth 0, Blackpool 1, Shrewsbury 1, Port Vale 0 and Wickham Wanderers 1, Reading 2. League 2 scores. AFC Wimbledon 2, Notts County 0, Colchester 1, Barrow 0, Crawley 1, Harrogate 1, Crew 2, Doncaster 1, Grimsby 1, Sutton 1, Newport County 1, Stockport County 0, Salford City 2, Milton Keynes Dons 1, Swindon 1, Mansfield 0, Tranmere Rovers 1, Gillingham 0 and Wrexham 3, Morecambe 0. National League South scores for you this afternoon. Half time, Chelmsford City nil, Truro City nil, Chippenham nil, Hampton and Richmond two, Dartford three, Torquay nil, Dover nil, Western Supermare one, Farnborough one, Bath City one, Sloughtown one, Braintree nil, St Albans City one, Maidstone two, Welling one, Yeovil one, Weymouth nil, Averley one. We'll be back with your second half commentaries in the football coming up next. Autumn. When it rains cats and dogs. When there are leaves on the line. And when there are four seasons in just one day. 
but you can't find your big warm coat. It remains very blustery, particularly along the south coast of Devon. I'm standing on Goodrington Beach. It is still absolutely pouring down. Walking up to the hut, there was wood all over the path. It's carnage. <laughs> There's just wood everywhere. We're here so you know what's happening. BBC Radio Devon. James Vickery. BBC Radio Devon. Back with the second half of your games coming up soon, but let's take a look at some of the national sports headlines. And in boxing, Ireland's Katie Taylor says she doesn't think she's ever been more motivated as she waits for her rematch with England's Chantelle Cameron in Dublin tonight. Cameron is defending her light welt welt belt when she claimed from Taylor a massive underdog back in May. In Formula One, Red Bull's Max Verstappen beat Ferrari's Charles Leclerc to take his 12th pole in 22 races this year at the season-ending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and in snooker there are two first round matches currently in action at the UK Championships at York's Barbican Theatre. A short while ago, Mark Allen was leading three frames to two over Ding Jung Wee. Elsewhere, former world champion Mark Williams was leading three frames to two against Zeng Fan. Right, more sport, of course, online for you. bbc.co.uk forward slash Devon. Let's take you back to your first half commentaries. And if you're listening on BBC Sounds and the BBC Sport website, we can take you back to Prince's Park, Torquay United away against Dartford. Mm, tricky second half in prospect, you would think, for Gary Johnson's side, but never say never. They're 3-0 down away against Dartford. Martin Gritton and Harry South. Thank you ever so much, James. And it'd have to be one heck of a second half. And, well, he looks like United are going to make a change at half-time. He said maybe it's not the best idea for Torquay United to make a change at the break grid. But Callum Dolan is coming on, off. Interestingly, Lewis Collins is going to come on. <laughs> man who hasn't scored yet this season. Well, you tell me. I mean, players out on the pitch, you've got to... Bit of job to do, bit of work to do, I should say. Um, just getting the general tempo up, just you know, bit of desire. You know, there's an opportunity here. They've got nothing to lose now, are they? Three, three nil down, and they'll be playing against a team that you would imagine being a bit more complacent, taking their foot off the gas. But that remains to be seen. It's a very cold evening now, isn't it? And the floodlights are on, and it's almost like different conditions. But it might suit Torquay. They've got to gamble. They've got. To They've got to play with higher tempo. They've got to create some chances. They've got to be brave. So let's see it. I think Dylan De Silva was also making way for Jack Stops, which you look at that. When you look at Bob, eventually, you can bring on Lewis Collins and Jack Stops. Mm. You're. We you should be doing better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, hear that over as well. Yeah. No. United you know, can bring on those two players and hopefully it can make a difference because it has to. Well, exactly. You know, they've got to change where no, they're not, playing. Sorry, it's not Dolan who's come off here because he's returned to the field. Kenny Griffiths, who's acting as the board man. So he's come off there. Well, Collins is coming on. I can tell you that. I think he's not come back out again. It is um, De Silva. Yeah, De Silva's definitely not coming on. Yeah, and... Uh, I think possibly... I think possibly... Well, there's Ollie's there, so is Moxie. Marshall. Dylan Crow. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I would say it was Crow. Are oh, the changes made? Yeah, it would make sense now, because I... Saw 20. Oh. Better get on with it, the ref wants to get cracking. I think we're just going through all the official note making to make sure that these changes are made. But so we can now confirm Stobbs and Collins on at the break for Dylan De Silva and Dylan Crow. I think it might move more into a sort of a back three. Yeah. Stobbs and Collins on the wing. You've got Dolan, McGavin, and Hall in midfield with Williams and Ash, the two up top. 
as United get the second half underway at Princess Park, it has to be better. It's got to be better if they're going to even think about taking a point back home. 3 0 at the break, Dartford lead, and Hazel Hall can steer the ball out towards Ross Marshall on the right hand side. Williams tries to turn on DR and it's touches heavy, and it goes out for a throw for the hosts, who remain unchanged. Unsurprisingly, with Sanford in goal, Statham, DR, and Nebard and Oduwadu in defence, Miller, Rodney, Winter, Chin, and Coulson the midfielders with Bradbury and Alexander up top, Alton top, Allen, Wall, Woods, and Barze all available for Alan Dowson to use in the second half off the bench if he wants to use them. The ball sent forward by Oduwadu over the top of Tomlinson and Bradbury into the hands of Reese Lovett. Yeah, looking for a bit longer now. You can see that um, they're all pushing up and they're short stuff. Ball sent over the top. Head on by Diara. And it goes up for a throw for United. Asa Hall looking to get something there. Diara had two hands in his back, but it was a clean header. Throw sent forward. Launched up in the air by Diara. Just to play it over his head. Brought down by Miller Rodney, who tries to play it towards Colson, and he just hoped that Dartford's pass is going to be a bit like that in the well, half as United have a throw. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, Dartford will probably think this, in the back of their heads this game's done and dusted, but Torquay need to get something quick. If you get something quick, put, put some doubt in their mind. We've seen this Torquay team produce some <laughs> miraculous moments, if not this season, but certainly other ones. So, um, But we need a quick response. Here's Hall. That's a ball. Scoops it over the top, looking for Ash. Lewis Williams. Lewis Williams? Lewis Collins. Pocket ball four by Richard Chin as I mix two talky players into one. It's Stephen with a throw for Dartford on this near side in front of Alan Dowson. Ball over the top by Moxie. Cleared away by Nebart. Apologies for any of the language picks up there as a fan walking behind us. His views on the management situation clear. So if you have in throughout the game. Throw forward by Moxie. Up by Hall. Down by Alexander, who can send this one forward looking for Bradbury. Tomlinson, who's done quite well to play on Bradbury this afternoon. Brings it down and clears the way, and it's not gone out for a but, it's gone out for a throw, should I say? But just knowing the danger of these throw-ins and the size of them, and they're slowing the game down. Anyway, <laughs> just just gives them an opportunity to slow the game right down. It's going to be order order to take this one. Another long throw from the left back. And stepping over the line. Yep. Cleared away by Moxie. Brought down by Oduwadu. Cuts in on Dolan brilliantly. It's a twist and turn back away. Across comes Dolan. Just goes with Oduwadu up for a four United. Throw from boxing. Head on by State. Dolan poorly fixed over the top. Bradbury looking to send in Alexander. One by Tomlinson. McGavin tries to turn it away. Gives it straight to Miller Rodney, whose head is poor. Dolan brilliantly turns on them two. Can look to try and get some space. Better. Finds Hall. Into the path of Collins. Better. Now with Ash on the edge of the area. Better. Goes back to McGavin, can shoot for these sorts of distances, yeah. urges to do so. Lost it over the bar and out for a goal kick. Oh, I moved, yeah, moved the ball better, didn't he? That's what you want to see, just playing a little bit, Dartford backing off. Opened up for McGavin, you know he can hit him from there, so fair play to him, but tested the keeper. Goal kick sent long by Ryan Sanford. Well done by Tomlinson. Now we're safe. Boxy wins possession back for United. It's a pass for Ash. Gets away from Nebar on the slippery surface. And he's breaking down the left hand side. He's joined by Winter. 
tries to cut it back in, it hits the Dartford man. Here's Dolan on the edge of the area, plays out towards the right, brilliant vision there to find stops. He gets across as well, looking for Williams! Oh, well, it's punched away by Sanford, brought down by Ash. Can he find some space? No, he can't. And it's wrestling into that area now for a goal kick, but the attempt from Theo Williams there sort of managed to somehow slice it up in the air. Well, brilliant play from Torquay. And that's just moving it, slick passing. I think Dartford looked very ordinary, but yeah, end product. We've seen Ash and Williams. Ash just there, just a bit clueless from those two up front today. It's just, you know, you, you need one of them. To, uh, you feel like a goal would obviously change their mental state and be more positive, but we've got to see something happen quick because the rest of the players have bucked up their ideas. Another one from McGavin. Winter. Flipped on by Bradbury, but it will go into the path of Lovett if the foul isn't given to Harvey Bradbury. It is on a yellow. Mm. Obviously, they're going to make sure that Hoxie's fine because he's gone down holding his head. And the physios are being called over. Mm. Well, he led with his arm, Bradbury. I'm wondering if she's caught him. I don't know how bad it is. He's been doing all game though, it's not come as a surprise. Now he's laughing and joking around. If someone. All I'm saying is we're 3 0 down. I'd, I know that Gary Johnson, certainly back in the day, would want someone to uh, make a statement, <laughs> whether it be a tackle, a positive bit of play, but Torquay just being a bit meek this afternoon. They made, Dartford, they made Dartford look very good. That's all I'm going to say. Going for some of the scores lately in the National League South. We'll this break of play champs for nil Truro, nil Chippenham, nil Hampton, which Borough two. Dover nil Western Super Mayor one, Farnborough two, Bath one, Hemel nil, Eastbourne nil, Slough one, Braintree nil, St Albans one, Mason two, Taunton nil, Worthing nil, Tunbridge nil, Tetman Hamilton Waterlooville nil, Welling one, Yeovil one, and Weymouth nil, Averley one. Moxie will have to come off for a few minutes because he has received treatment. So Marty will temporarily be down to ten, but he's thinking Bradbury may be one more challenge away from the second yellow card and the second red of the season. Be correct the record really. Second red card of the month. Poor from Lovett from the goal kick. It's found Dolan who will get away from one man. He's blocked up by Bradbury. Is that not a foul? I mean, it's ball sent through in towards the path of George Alexander. Lovett's way off his line. He's blocked it. It's bouncing for Alexander. Still going. Can he get the shot away? No, he can't because he's been shielded out. Back up towards Bradbury, but Boxy clears the way. United defended that one well from their own there mistake. They've covered well. And That's Dolan wants to launch it oh. forward. It's one back there by Josh Nebard. Darwin must be kicking themselves because they could have killed the game. Yeah, cool. I just want to talk you to put one of these tackles in with a bit of intent, you know, and just let Darwin know they're in it. Balls forward, there's plenty of opportunities. I think Moxie's going to. Uh... Oh, Kick forward by Lovett. Seconds won by Dolan. He's giving it to Alexander and he can send it out towards Bradbury on the right hand side. In comes a challenge there Great from time. Collins. Picked up by Chin, sends in the cross low into Alexander. It's blocked with a few talky players. Tomlinson's definitely there, and it was. Was that? I can't tell if it's Collins. It was Collins, it's Collins. I'm not sure what's happened though, because he went in, he was the aggressor in the tackle, and he's come off worse. Ball spilled out. It is a talky ball, so you would hope they'd pass it back. It's not Collins, because he's walking towards us. Oh, it? sorry, yeah, towards you're right. It's not Moxie, no, no, it's not Moxie. Yeah, Dolan. Yeah. No, maybe. I think it's Dolan. Is it? I'm pretty sure Dolan's got tattoos, so I think Yeah, it is him. We're flying in with a challenge. Yeah, I think. Talking. Well, at least he's seen a bit of desire from them in the tackle, but they don't want to be reckless and cause themselves injuries. Need to see the positive play the other way. Dunn is going to have to go off and because he has received treatment just like Moxie did minutes ago. So once again, Tilke down to 10 men temporarily. Tunbridge 1, Havington, Waterlooville 0. Forward it goes by Lovitz. 
DR Nebart. Run out by Bradbury. Finds Moxie. Play back towards Rhys Lovis. It's been a bit off in the second half. He managed to send that one forward. Williams. Best hands in the back. Moxie. Uh, uh, and it's played into the middle, it's open space offside. towards Bradbury, who remains on side, it goes off Tomlinson, falls towards Alexander, tries to poke it away, and his Hall to pick up the pieces again for United, it's just well Dartford, they just need one open. shot and it could kill this game off. Yeah, it's wide open now though, that's the thing, Fuck, you've just made it that way, but they've got nothing, they're toothless Dolan. going forward. Out towards Stobbs, who can send a cross in, taking on his man, Odawadu, Odawadu blocks him off, the referee says that's fair. Well, he made no attempt to get the ball, did he? Welling 2, Yeovil 1. That can bring a wry smile up anyway. St. Albans 2, East 2. National League South. Long ball forward by the keeper Sam. Tomlinson wins the header. Brought down by Chin. Lays it over the top. Marshall can clear it away. All over the top by Stops. Diara. Flicked on again. Out towards Coulson. Looks up as Coulson. Oh, it's one back though by Dolan. Who can look to feed in Brad Ash. 30 yards out from goal, takes his man on. Urs to shoot, she does. It's set by Sanford. Williams on the rebound. Oh, he's managed to head it up, but it's offside, thankfully, to spare his blushes. Well, that's even worse. I mean, Williams going to be offside and then not put the ball in the net. I mean, he's just, it's, I, I understand he's not confident, Harry, but just, it's causing more problems than good up there. It's an ash. Better from him. Need to mend product. Welling three, Yeovil one. The team which shows how mad this league is. Yeah. The team which lost 5-1 to Torquay. Currently beating a team who've only lost one game. Who've run this extraordinarily brilliant run at the top of the table. Paul couldn't find a stop. It's one back by Oduwadu. Launch it forward this time for Chin. Heads it down into the path for Bradbury. We'll try and take it on first time. It's got by Tomlinson. Chase this one down again. Trying to do it to Bradbury. He won't keep it in, and that will be a throw for United. Tom Bridge 2, 10, 11. initial bit of contact but soft one it's a, a few of the Turkey players looking a little bit lost out there aren't they I just think maybe Gary's leaving them out there to have a little bit of an education and think consequences but quite expect a bit more coming here not seen enough of a Goes up 
of 30 minutes to go. We've not seen, we've seen a slight improvement, but the game's opened up and they've looked even more vulnerable at the back, haven't they? Torquay, with a bit more ruthlessness, Dartford might have had another one or two this half. But Torquay should certainly have had one. Diara. Brought down by Coulson. Here's Nebard. Looks to send this forward. Brought down by Moxie. We've got the first ball, Ash. Fling well. Comes in from the Darford man. It goes up for throw for United. Oh no, he goes up for Darford. Forward again, this time by Maxwell Statham. Turned in towards the middle by Bradbury. Gavin tries to clear it away, so back towards Bradbury. For Maxwell Statham goes off Ash. Here for Dartford. By Collins Williams trying to get away. He's got. He's being held by the by his waist by the Dartford defender. Now Hall sends it over the top. Ash knows he's in an offside position. Felix oh, Williams, Williams is offside, offside though. Wow, the flag's gone up here. It was Ash who was offside. Williams was onside. Williams chases the ball, but the officials have given the offside to Ash. He was nowhere near the seat. Two mates to two. by Sanford. Stops over the top. Flicked on by Ash, who's beaten Diara. Nebard can bring it down. Here's Statham. Well done. Well pressure there by Callum Dolan. The ball got play for a Fair. throw for Dartford. Set the throw for Wood by McGavin. Nebard wins the header. Goes up for a throw for United. Moxie launches for looking for Acer Hall. Header one by Statham. Good for a United throw. Good forward stuff. looking for Williams who will bring it down. Here's Hall. Chops inside, surging forward, sets it out towards the left hand side for Collins. Cuts in on his man, gets the cross in deep, turned away by Coulson. Moxie brings it down under the pressure from Bradbury. Tries to play through one back by Chin. Now, Willa Rodney in the middle to Alexander. He's only got Thomas to take on here. Nut makes his man, he's through one on one with the goal. Love it, makes himself big. In comes the challenge from Alexander. The referee gives a free kick in United's favour and a yellow card for Alexander. It's a slightly odd one. I think perhaps Lovett was the aggressor there, but through their booking, the keeper was complaining. Well defended. Wide open again on the counter, weren't they? Though Collins' his ball just shows you the counter attack. Turkey gambling everything they get back in this, but it's they're not looking any more likely to score, unfortunately. They're playing some good play in Acer Hall there, trying to link it up. You'd say it's probably the overprotection of goalkeepers in those sort of situations why it's gone that way. Four four by Lovett. One by Miller Rodney. His chin sends it over the top. Chasing this one down is Alexander. Tries to take it, play it back. Tomlinson wins the ball back for United. Sets it downfield by Nebard. Boxy's header. Brought down by Coulson. Four chin. Keeper. He's knock it back well to done. Reece Lovett. Really good. And one Eastbourne Borough and Mill. Ball 
brought forward by Rhys Lovett. Put on by Stafford. Collins brings it down to Callum Dolan. Let's play it through. The referee gives a free kick for United. Yep. A little push in the back by Miller Rodney. St. Torben's three, it's two, two. It looks like the games of the day in the National League South. It's not looking any good for Exeter City. 4-0 down to Bolton now. Oof. to go will be getting louder. Stops with a free Great kick ball. in. Flicked on. Cleared away by Chin for throw for United. Stops to take this one. Brought down by Ash. Trying to turn away from Chin, which he nearly does. He stops, he cuts in. Chin gets there in front and then goes up for a throw. Finally going to see a deep, too long throw. Saying 66 minutes, in it comes. Brought down, here's Dolan on the edge of the area. Twisting and turning, scoops it through, blocked there by the Dolphin man, and they get to counter-attack with Alexander. Gets away from McGavin, here's Bradbury. Tomlinson with the pressure on him, he's brought down the Dolphin number 23. Then tries to play it quickly, Tomlinson's... Well, well, I don't get in this situation. Tomlinson's listening to the referee, or what the referee's saying. Bradbury then takes a free kick quickly, which Tomlinson blocks. Tomlinson can't do anything because he listens to the referee, and now he's got a booking. Slightly overzealous officiating, but it is the new rules, isn't it? Any sort of blocking there. Bradbury's just taking advantage of it. I mean, Chin was doing the same there. Kick the ball against his legs, he gets booked. But Torquay not being savvy enough to do it themselves. It's just a bit naive all round, to be honest. And for a throw it goes for Dartford. No urgency at all in Dartford. No blame them for not having any. Havens have got a goal back against Tunbridge Angels 2 1. Well, in 4, Yeovil 1. Again, the National League South is a mad league. Long throw from Odawaru. Get up from McGavin. The R will shield that for a corner. Yeah, I'm not a gambling man, Harry, but I certainly wouldn't be putting any coupons, any, any accumulators in the National League and be expecting them to pan out the way I want them to. Crazy. Oh, I expected a bit more of Torquay today, though, you know, he played with a bit more guy on. Kind of, they've just been, they've been kind of bullied, but some great goals from Dartford as well. We've got to give them some credit. And it comes from Coulson. Head up from Marshall. Brought down, cleared off the line by Ash. Chases down with Dolan. Gets away from his man. He pokes it forward. Ash won't get there first under Jordan Winter, who wants to play for Gary Johnson at Cheltenham Town. Send it forward. Brought down. Now with Miller Rodney. Chin. Plays the one two. Brilliant work from him. Tries to squeeze it through. Bouncing around Chin. Can he get the shot away? He can't just clear the way. Dolan. Hall. Oh, Tries to come from to McGavin. Oh, to turn. It's all, it also seems like at times United they get the ball, they think for a second, and that yes, second they close down immediately. That's it. You've got, to, you, you've got to move it quick. I mean, that was his. That was Ace as well there, that's a second guessing yourself, that little doubt creeping in your mind. When you receive the ball, you've got to know where it's going. Here's Moxie. Back to Dolan, gets away from his man, in comes a flying chance from Stafford. Out for a throw, it goes for United. Again, to see a huge tackle from Statham, Dartford. They've, they've been putting him in all afternoon and it's just a, it's a big marker, you know, that physicality from the difference today. He throws it short to Dolan. Looking to get away from his man. There's no one showing feet. No, neither one of the strikers not remotely interested in going to feet there for Torquay. It's, it's ridiculous. That's my Gavin. Marshall. My Gavin. Trying to put that ball in the box. Looking for Marshall. It's one back by Odawadu. Coulson, ball touch from him, goes for a throw for United. Better, Weird. 
Gresham. It comes across as deep as to Dick Lewis Collins to even attempt to get to. Goal kicked off. So how many how many bodies, first team bodies are injured at the Met High that would come in and make a difference here? What are we missing? So you've got Dan Martin injured. Yes. Not fortunately illness injuries that hampered his progress last year. Tom Lapsley, you would Big miss. you would definitely say be there. Obviously having his we, we talked about it off air. Jarvis. Yes. Missing him one. massively today. Yeah. We, when you're battling Lucy DR, when you're bass battling Josh Nebard, who's just won another header, you need Aaron Jarvis. You need someone like a as we've seen over the past few years at Torquay United, you've had a Danny Wright, you've had a Frank Dublin. Oh, absolutely. You've got you players experiencing and not just that, but now, you know, the ability to, to turn things for you. It's Dolan. Collins. Hall. Pulling forward out the left hand side is Cam Dolan. That's the cross in. And a one by Diara. He eventually cleared away by Maxwell Stafford. Mila Rodney will try and bring it down now with McGavin. He's gone the wrong way with his second touch, trying to get away from his man, but he's brilliant play. Take possession. Switching the play out towards the right hand side with stops and evade stops as well. <laughs> you had a like, feeling that was going to happen, didn't you? Yeah. Like, I, I understand that you don't want, at this level with budgets and everything, you don't want to overload your squad too much with too many players. And you create a, a, a horrible atmosphere within the squad, but if you know you're losing Aaron Jarvis for two or three months, surely you can go and try and loan in a striker for two or three months to fill in that gap whilst yeah, Jarvis is out. You would think so, and you would have. Uh, 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 knowing the recruitment that's gone on here in the past I'm sure that's been the case but I just don't think the players are there and, and to be of the quality now whether you get a stop gap in and whether you've got contacts into the higher reaches of some of the quality of the players that Tokyo Bay will bring in but this is a long way down do you know what I mean for some of those players now do you go for an experienced guy look at I mean there's a lot of players in that Dartford team that are never going to no offence no disrespect but they're, they're not ambition to play higher and they're not going to play any higher and they're, they're very good at this level and doing what they do um, and a lot of other players that have come down that have experienced, but Torquay just are, are missing that, that, that that's something different. They've just been, you've been very predictable and sadly too easy to beat. But I, I, I go back to those injuries, there's such, such a key thing because um, they're big players at this level. That's all you need, one or two, a backbone of quality. You don't need 10, you just need a couple. A good play from Torquay. Ash cuts in. Still going. There's the airplane's back out towards Dolan. Takes a shot of a distance. Wide of Sanford's goal and for a goal kick. Well, better from Dolan. Ash again. I think Ash with a bit more confidence would have had a pop himself there, wouldn't he? But bereft of that today. Don't know what the change is. It's Fear Williams who makes play. And, and Ethan Archer comes on. It was a live wire at Harrington Water Louisville. It wasn't eligible to play in the FA Trophy tie against Yeovil last weekend. Try and turn around. This is Paul Burrow on Tuesday night. Roger Lester will be giving full commentary of that one from Priory Lane on Tuesday night. A rearranged game after United's Ventures. Ethan Archer seems like he may have called the Dartford man late. No. Freak has been given Dartford's way. Has he? Wow, well, yeah. Seems a little bit harsh. Champs have won Truro one, two quick goals of that one at Melbourne Park, Melbourne Road. Well, Talking Night will play the final game before Christmas. Bolton five, Exeter City nil. Of course, we'll have all the post match interviews with Stephen Schumacher, Gary Caldwell, and Gary Johnson, but two of those managers probably don't want to be facing the press after this one. Yeah. I was like, sure, he probably would be quite happy to. Yeah, good luck with that one, Harry. <laughs> Colson with a 
free kick just inside the United half. Diara looking to get away from Moxie, wins his header. Brought down by Bradbury, remains on the side, gets shot away. Oh, no. Clyde Lovett's goal, one out for a goal kick. Short from Lovitz. But Gavin turns back towards Moxie. It just sort of feels at the minute, you know, to play the ball forward, they're pausing, they're having to turn around and play a back. Well, there's no one to hit it to, isn't it? They're just playing triangles of nothing here. You know, just get caught in the ball in your own 18 yard box. Because that's what happens. Williams not protected the ball today. Williams. Out towards Coulson. On his right foot gets the cross in. Tomlinson wins the initial header. Collins will get there in front of Richard Chin. Back in the middle to McGavitt. Here's Dolan. Ball over the top, Archie's going to try and give a chase for straight to Sanford. Worthing leading 1 0 against Taunton. Truro just played a 2 1 against Chelsea. All those goals come in the last five minutes or so. Get two men on him. That's ridiculous. They're just letting him back in. Again, <laughs> talking. Just naive. Coulson, Adewadu, back to Coulson again. Here's Adewadu. There by Stops. Marshall now finds Archer. Ashes in the middle, looks to feed through the former wave of man. Nevard gets in front of him and he'll send it forward. Brought down by Marshall. Got Gavin in the middle, she finds. Oh, well played. Pokes it in towards Dolan, who tries to turn on Winter. And Darford have the ball back again. Coulson tries to scoop it over. Brought down by Tomlinson. Here's Dolan. Marshall. Dolan. Better Marshall. Play. Over the top, chasing this one down to stops. Header one by Nebard, brought down by Diara. Goes up for a throw for Darford. Long throw down the left hand side. Brought down by Marshall over the top, he goes up for another throw for Rodawadu. Hand side. Hey, man, gets up his right foot, shambles. gets a cross in. Header up there, Gary, it's a back Gary, trailing header for Richard Chin. Out for a throw. Out oh, for a cock, actually. Yeah, the yeah, chin's gone down, and I think there's a little bit of crap there on the uh, from Chelton, who's probably played more youth football this season than senior football. Catch up whilst Chin's receiving a bit of the treatment, and I remember saying that Chin's afternoon is over, and Dartford will look to go and make the change. So for the electric board, it's definitely going to be Brandon Barze who's going to come on. Back from international duty with Montserrat. Slightly nicer climate than. Yeah, for this bit. evening. I know that half the islands are inhabitable. They made Chin look up a very good player today. He scored a great goal, but just ambling over there. This game seems to have grown to a halt. So, from Barzai for the final 10 minutes of the game. Substitution for Chin. Coming off to number 27, Richard Chin. Replacing number 17, Brandon Barzi. Which we'll be seeing on the uh, international front side here, the new manager of Montserrat was for the last international fixtures. None other than Lee Bowyer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. One of 
promote teammates with the physio for Montserrat. So I'm posting about it. Looks like a nice gig. <laughs> nice clan, it? Knowledge is that good to keep it devoutly linked. I think the captain wants to called Plymouth. Oh, there you go. Nicely linked back there, Harry. Throw on for United as Brandon Barze wins his first header of the afternoon. Throw forward by Moxie. Coulson wins back possession. Sends it through towards George Alexander on the left hand side, taking on Tomlinson. Cuts in on the youngster, but Tomlinson stands strong, wins the ball back and sends it forward towards Archer. Under the pressure from Odewadu, gives the ball to Coulson. Nebard. Get it. Ash putting on. the pressure onto Nebard, and he's won the ball back for the reference. That's a foul by Brian Ash onto Josh Nebard, who seems like he's always falling. That's soft. That is soft. Far too easy, Bash. That did well there. Good bit of pressing from him. And Sanford will trundle over to then launch the goal kick forward. One by Moxie. Down by Miller Rodney. He's just to shoot, wants to kick Finn air. Ball can bring it down towards Marshall. Oh, take a touch. Sends it forward. Brought down by Nebard. Oh, just it almost feels like the I know they're playing the long ball. But if you're gonna play the long ball, I'm pretty sure Brad Ash and Ethan Archer could easily out to boost the DR. Well he's putting it into good ears. Like I was saying earlier, there's a there's a let's see, now. Let's see where they go. Stops. Comes back to Marshall. Calling for it does Lewis Collins on the left hand side. Brings it down in towards the middle. Ash back out towards Collins again for United on the left hand side. Looking to take on his man, cuts in, gets a shot away, it's blocked. Falls to Archer. Diara gets in front of him, and it will go up for a goal kick for Duffy. Yeah, what happens though, Harry, and it's, very, it's really common, when they've got a big centre half like that, they, you end up just balls actually get drawn into him because it seems like that's the place you're going to hit, and they're just they're positionally should have been hitting it right down the flanks, in behind the fullbacks. As we were saying, first half to Silva, just getting acres of space, you hit it down the channels, you make those big guys run make them run all day and, it, it, and you see how quickly they back off you but Torquay looking up and they're looking up where the strikers are and the big guy's got them in his pocket and just like hitting balls down their throats and it's really common you see it happen, <laughs> happen an awful lot sadly just trying to or you would think just trying to work it out you know Torquay haven't done that Marshall it's a heavy ball back to his lobby he clears his way straight back towards the feet of Coulson tries to poke it in towards Miller Rodney here's Coulson again Pokes through look for Baze. All out for a goal kick for Moxie. Well, it's not for Moxie, a goal kick. Moxie will shoot. Unlock it, take I think it all does point to that fact that he's got he's not got the options to compete in terms of physicality here this afternoon and maybe the conditions didn't suit playing it round quicker and nippy, but bottom line is the players just haven't worked hard enough, you know? Or, or if they've worked hard, they just haven't done it in the right way to affect the game, unfortunately. Stops. Marshall. Plays it in towards Ethan Archer. Better. Cuts in, looks to take on his man. Still trying to get away through, but he's not been allowed anywhere by Odawadu all winter. Now with Alexander. Turns back in. Back by United here is Stops. Pop up by Barze. Picked up on the edge of the area there by Collins. Twists and turns. Falls to Hall. Now with Dolan. Trying to find some sort of space to shoot and he can't. It's blocked by Barze. And there into the back of Terrell Rodney goes Dolan. That's just a frustration showing there for United is done. They're going to make their second change. We shall see. Paris left in top. Come on. Let's see the departure of Sam and Odewadu. Defensive resilience for Dartford. Yeah. 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 
Starr with a dot for free kick for Ryan Sanford. He's been excellent this afternoon, isn't he? What do I do? All over the park. Leading 2 0, it's the 5 0 down. Torquay 3 0 down. Sides in Devon. Harbury goes down the area, not interested in anything. Dipped, leading 2 0 away at Hanwell Town in the 7 League South Division. Glenn Parkway leading Bracknell by a goal to them. They've been on a few good runs in the FA Cup in recent years. Here's Ash, trying to play it through to Archer, cleared away by Nevard. Moxie. Four minutes left. Here's Paul. Foul by Miller Rodney on the ball. Be a free kick for United. Miller likely to get a goal back in this one to give the fans who've made one of the longest trips they can make this season. Here's Archer. Collins scoops it in. Off the bar, enough for a goal kick it goes. Chelmsford are down to 10 and home to True. 2-1 to the White Tigers. Come on, boys, kick your heads up! Come on, United! Come on, come on! Three minutes, normal time. Positives today, if any. There's a hard question to give you, but well, the sad thing is, Mark Halstead being back would have been a nice positive. Um, but he came ill, um, and I don't actually think the goalkeeper's done that badly today for four keys. He's, he's done as well as he can. I just think, yeah, the positives, getting players back from injury. Get, I mean, the, you would think this would be. Uh, coaching video for Gary and a video nasty for them on the way home if they've got a copy of this game because when you ask a player what they did today and if they've got the better of their opponent or if they think they played well I think this is evidence to the contrary um, more disappointing is just the, the confidence isn't it the confidence of the players that you know some of these players have got qualities that they've not been able to show today because of confidence because Maybe experience, maybe been bullied a little bit. Got to learn quick though. Can't be bad for his business by Luke Allen. Bolton 6, Exeter 0. Chippenham 1, Hampton 2. One of the latest scores in the National League South. Collins plays over the top to Ethan Archer, who's definitely on side because Alton Top yeah, is further back. But the was, fish on the far side has gone and given yep. a, fr a free kick to Dartford. I'm well, not sure who's going to take this one. If it's going to be Nevard, I don't know if it's going to be Sanford. Alton Top might just take so he can keep the ball. The referee's calling it to be taken. Sanford, who I don't think is going to have an easier afternoon of football in his life than this one. Had a one initially by Marshall. Brings it down. Paulson closed down for a throw. A throw for Marshall down the right. Cleared away by Alton Top and up for a throw. Throw for Marshall to attack. And ball. And ball against Terrell Miller Rodney. So this is where you just kick it against him, get him a book in. Seriously, how are we justifying this? Where's the justification for this? Here's Collins going to take the free kick. Dolan. Long ball from the man loan from Fleetwood. Header up by Diara. Brought down by the Dartford man. Ball up towards the right hand side. One back there by Callum Dolan. Can he beat this man? He can't do it. It's one by Alton Top and picked up here by Ash. Tries to get the cross in off the back of Alton Top. Four minutes will be added on to the end of this game. Sorry for any. Falmouth language used just then. 
still dancing through his ash. His shot blocked off the back of the Dartford man out for a throw. Was, well, we're next to George Edwards and the board of directors at Torquay, and the United fans have come over. They're not happy. No. That's why I have turned the effects mic down. Here's a corner for United. It will be an outswinging corner. Looking for Hall. Turned away by Statham. Here's Stops. Edge of the area. Gets a shot on, but over the bar and out for a goal kick for Dartford. That's well, it's not helping, is it? I mean, I can understand the fans' frustration, but Raymond Straten at this point, it's not going to solve anything. But there needs to be some discussions had mm. to improve this, whatever that takes. They spawn on Tuesday. And Tunbridge Angels at home next Saturday. Long throw from Sanford. Moxie wins the initial header. All done by Collins. Now with Ash back to Callum Dolan. Trying to keep it in play, which he does. Challenge from Brandon Barze, throw for United. Yeah, there's security next to us. With the well, the United fans who are behind us are making their voices heard towards the home direct, the way directors next to us. The views on the management is also being made clear as well. Throw on from Dartford. Barze brings it down. Given away by McGavin. It's now with Terrell Miller Rodney and Colson's on the left hand side. Taking on Ross Marshall on the edge of the area. Takes on the shot. Blocked off Moxie. Can be cleared away by Tomlinson. Dolan brings it down. Here's Hall out towards the left hand side to Collins, who will cut it back in towards the middle. Switches the play out towards the Stobbs on the right hand side. He's got Archer, he's got Ash in the middle. Sends it in deep, looking for Brad Ash, and Sanford comes out and claims the ball from that cross. And obviously, it will be a bit of time wasting for the keeper. He holds the ball down. So we're two and a half minutes into the four additional minutes. And it seems like some of the United fans have been moved on from behind us. They are frustrated, they are angry. It is a long journey. Mm -hmm. The performance... I don't know if I can say much more on the performance. The scoreline of Dartford 3, Torquay United 0. With the frustrations that the, home, that the fans have had lately. Well, looks like this don't help. Well, I mean, the, you can, the fans can shout that, but I think there should be some quarrel with the players today. That's a team that should be competing better than this. Certainly against the part-time. Part-time time? Yeah. yeah. So Full-time v part-time, those sort of things. So that should mean that you're certainly fitter, stronger, sharper, just by the nature of it. And the referee blows the final whistle. Dartford 3, Torquay United 0. The game was over after 45 minutes when Dartford had the score of 3-0. United, it could have been so different when Fear Williams had an opportunity where he lofted the ball over Ryan Sanford. The ball just dropped behind the crossbar. Mm -hmm. Richard Cheen on debut, twisting and turning. He won the player of the match in the end from the home sponsors, curling it into the top corner. And then Dartford managed to double their lead when George Alexander turned away from his man to fire it into the top corner. They made it 3-0 and Moussa Diara volleyed home a Luke Coulson free kick. United played best in the second half, but they, to say there was bite but no teeth is probably the best way of calling United's attack this afternoon. They struggled to beat Josh Nevard and Moussa Diara. Sanford had quite an easy afternoon and a frustrating afternoon again for Torquay United. They're beaten by three goals to nil. Grits, your final thoughts on what's a very disappointing afternoon for Torquay United? Yeah, I, I, I feel for them. I, I know a lot of lads have gone out there and done their best and think that, you know, the endeavour, but what they haven't done is been brave enough. They haven't gone out there and competed in the right way. Um, and they got rolled over quite easily here. And, um, you know, and that's a, that's a sad thing because you're hearing the shouts for Gary, but with his experience, I know that the great things he's achieved at this club, it's just them. Um, 
it's so frustrating because you want the players to go out there and, and do their best for him um, and, and I'm not sure that they've done that today so uh, him and Aaron will, I'll be having words with them I'm sure there's um, you know some some shouting going on and around us isn't there and, and, and we can hear the frustrations from the fans but I, I mean Dartford should be enjoying this because I think that's a great performance from them um, you know that's that, that's it's probably a perfect game for them, isn't it? And, and that second half was a chance for Torquay, but we're seeing the players go and clap the fans, and I respect that, because that's that takes some doing when your head's low. Mm. So um, regroup, get the injured players back fit, create an environment in training where you're competing and realising that you don't come to these places and then you're not entitled to points. You've got to fight for them, because we've it's got to see a better performance than that. There's a quick turnaround to Eastbourne Borough on Tuesday night. Well, a full-time yeah. team now as well. Yeah. Down at Priory Lane. Yep. After this sort of performance, you probably want to play very quickly after. Yeah, because exactly. Because you don't want this one being ringing in the back of the head. No, exactly. And, and and I think a lot of the team came through the injuries, but that's it. You got you you have to have a response on Tuesday. You have to have a response. You know, you can't guarantee victories, but you can guarantee effort, performance. You know, attitude, tempo. You can create all of those things. Torquay didn't do any of them today, so anything. Anything they can do is an improvement on that. Let's see what they can do. There's been another goal between Bolton and Exeter. 7 0. Oh my goodness. There. And again, another long trip for one of our Devonian sides. Going up to Bolton and losing 7 0 is not what they want to be doing. Later scores in the National League South. Some full time scores. I'll say if they're still going. If they are, Chelmsford 1, Truro 2 are still going. It's finished between Chippenham and Hampton, which borough 2 1 to the visitors. Dover nil, Western Super Mare 1. They're in additional time between Farnborough and Bath, where it's 2 all. Hemel Hempstead 1, Eastbourne Borough 0. Slough Town 3, Braintree 0. St Albans 3, Maidstone 2. Taunton 1, Worthing 1. Tunbridge Angels 4. 10 man having to Walton Louisville 1. Maybe the result of the day Welling United 4, Yeovil Town 1, and Weymouth 1. Averley 1 is currently the latest score there between those two sides. Where does it leave the National League South table? For the moment, Dartford, of course, they do leap over Torquay United. Torquay now drop out of the top 10. Currently sitting two, uh, sitting two points off the playoffs. It's a very close Nick group of teams outside the playoffs and as you can clearly see you win one game you're into the playoffs yeah. you lose it you're outside the top 10 yeah well I mean that's that's if some uh, condole oh, well what's the word um, that's a consolation. some consolation thank you Harry my, my, my head's too cold to be able to produce the words um, because you, you go on a run but what there is is some sort of like there's a bit of a malaise isn't there there's something a bit toxic about the place at the minute because they're looking at everything through the prism of this kind of failure and it's like no you have to look at it on the positive side and say what can we do to get through this um, but it, it's, it's it's that burden isn't it that burden of and, and the, the bitterness of uh, relegation that sometimes c you carry with you mm. and, and it can quickly those wounds can be quickly opened by by day, afternoons like like today so um, yeah you, you put a little run together you get back up there and you get on with it I mean you look you were absolutely right the league's crazy you know in terms of Yovo getting beaten and, 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 and the way that they did and the way that Torquay performed against them last week and you say well if they're the yardstick for this league then we should be competing but you, you're up against different types of teams so the physicality today that, I keep saying it but that was the difference between the two teams and they, the, the, the experience they got bullied today and, and, they, and they didn't recover from it um, and, and you need to find a way to compete against these teams because there's going to be more of them and then when they'll see that what the Dartford did against Torquay today it would make me think well that's how we'll play against Torquay so they're going to have to come up with a way to play with it you know you think when you think about the bitterness of the relegation, say 75% of these players were the team who got relegated last year. The manager has stayed the same and has stayed longer than when Gary Owls was in charge. He got let go middle of October. Gary Johnson then came in. It's a very quick question, but do you think because there were so much changes that season that it remains to do a good thing for Torquay, but this season it's, it's the same as last year? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, 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 the, the difference is you've got you've got to say that, that the gulf between the, this league and the league above it, the National League, you've got to say that these players, if they were considering themselves National League players, they've got they've got to compete. Well, a disappointing afternoon. The tensions are rising. It's finished. Dartford three, Torquay United nil. is autumn it's beautiful scenery around devon especially in autumn i prefer it to summer this is our place little hints of winter coming in from the beaches 
hot chocolate. Love the crisp, sunny, cold days. Change of the colours. Ah, oh, woolly jumpers and bonfires. What do you love about autumn in Devon? It's just a beautiful place any time of year, but I think autumn's special. I just love to walk around the shop. Sitting by an open fireplace. It's very wanting to see any ice cream. Loving autumn in Devon. Falling leaves. I like Devon in the autumn because of the autumn colours. BBC Radio Devon. Radio Devon. Sport with James Vickery. Five o'clock, Saturday the 25th of November. This is James Vickery with BBC Radio Devon Sport. The headlines tonight. First half goals from Morgan Whitaker and Finn Azaz help Plymouth Argyle to all three points at home to play off chasing Sunderland. That's a nice ball out to the left-hand side. Dragged onto the right foot and drilled into the back of the net. Finn Azaz cuts him from the left-hand side. Drills it across the goal Goalkeeper finds the bottom right hand corner. Argyle have a second in the first half. Well, they haven't always been on top. They are 2 0 up. In League One, well, what can we say about Exeter City today? Embarrassing away against Bolton. They've lost 7 0. Good turn by Dempsey. He sends a ball in. It is seven. Oh, my word. Ulundulu has got the seventh in injury time. Bolton 7, Exeter City 0. In National League South, Torquay United slipped to a heavy defeat at Dartford. Another free kick for Dartford. Coulson going again to take it as their set piece taker. Sends it in towards the middle, in towards the Yara, who turns in the third. This is just easy for Dartford now. Dartford free Torquay 0. Yeah, that's how it finished this afternoon for the Gulls. In our non league football, there's late drama at Sidmouth as the leaders Ivy Bridge slipped to their first defeat of the season. Oh, hit the post, and Sidmouth have nicked it right at the very end of the game. Paul King, of course, hit the post. They were 2-0 up inside 13 minutes through Liam Carey and Nathan Cooper. Jack Alexander pulled one back after 54. Jake Lane's penalty in 67. And Sidmouth are the first team to defeat Ivory Bridge in the league this season. In the rugby, there's a dramatic last gasp win for 10-man Plymouth Albion. The referee blows his final whistle at the Brickfields and Plymouth Albion have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, scoring two late tries despite playing most of the second half with 14 men after hooker Harry Wilkinson was red-carded.